everyone. Welcome to Houston Life this Wednesday, February 20th. I'm Courtney Savala. It freaks me out that it's February 20th already. Girl, get on the train because it has left the station. It has left. Time is zipping by. I Hi, know. Courtney. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek. Welcome to the show on this very special day. It is a very special day. Do you want to talk about it? Come yeah, on. come on. It's National Love Your Pet Day. Catherine, Thank who's you, a big Catherine. fan of Tex, and Tex loves her as well. Yeah, but she just woke him up from his pup nap. So, so. he, was he okay? Okay. He, he was fine. He he's is been getting heavy, this huh? Chew toy. Yeah, he's, got, he's grown up so, so much. I know, it really is amazing how we've only had him for what, nine months now, maybe 10 months, and he has totally, uh, totally started living the life. He loves a little doggy. He must have just been outside. He smells like outside. <laughs> what if, okay. That's what I always say to my boys. I'm like, you guys smell like puppies. Go take a shower. <laughs> well, that's a compliment in my book. Yeah, it is. I it's a good thing when they totally smell like fine. puppies. Um, you know, coming up on today's show, besides lots of loves for Tex, you know, it's rodeo season. We're in it, guys. I mean, from brisket to chicken, even the proper etiquette. Proper etiquette to going to the rodeo? Yeah. Or eating? There is etiquette for sure. You got to know the rodeo barbecue etiquette. For okay, sure. I just eat it all. I think I'm covered in that. Oh, there then you go. we are talking all things barbecue, and you can test your knowledge. We are going to do a barbecue trivia game. Play along with us on our clicktovote.com a little bit later on in the show. We love playing games. Here. We certainly do. We may be terrible at them, but we love them. <laughs> also, folks, now is the time to start thinking about your spring garden. Everything from what to plant to proper maintenance, what you need to know to help your veg thrive in our Houston climate and you know what the humidity and the heat it makes for the perfect perfect garden here I hope so I'm still waiting for mine to actually stick nothing sticks in my well, garden it requires a little attention a little bit and if you're bored with your weeknight meals we are sharing an easy recipe for spinach and ricotta ravioli okay ravioli pasta you know it gets pasta gets a bad name pasta's you know it it's good it's a bad rap, you know what I mean? Well, people always says, say, like, oh, you eat pasta and you gain weight. Go to Italy. Like, they, they're all, like, thin and beautiful there. And yeah. they all, all they eat is pasta and red wine, right? So what's their secret? I don't know. Maybe you just have to live there. <laughs> I know, right? Well, have you heard of all these Italian towns that are now offering people these crazy incentives to move there? So there's this one town in particular. I think it's called Borgo Mezzevalle. They will pay you, get this, ten thousand dollars just to move there like if you, so if i was going to do this they would just pay me ten thousand dollars to move there i mean that's what they're saying i don't speak italian but the translation seems to indicate that and for every child you have because i know you plan on having a lot more kids <laughs> uh you could get a thousand dollars for each kid yeah you know a thousand dollars but the reason what? they're doing this yeah so there are all these beautiful mountain towns i guess in italy that are actually seeing dwindling populations so much so that there are so few births that in some towns they're facing closing the schools oh wow so this is just to boost up the population bring up the population i, mean, I don't know which, where it is but i'd go oh they're beautiful they're beautiful yeah you can look them up there, there are articles all over like this one we read on cnn.com uh, but there are all kinds of towns this is just one providing incentives for people who want to move there and start a family my big question is what would you do for work yeah I mean I don't I don't know <laughs> drink wine are know they either. paying me to like live you know Maybe. is that 10 grand a month or what is that that's a flat fee? It's a one-time flat fee of 10 grand. And you have to make, uh, at, at minimum, 6,000 euros per year to live there, which is what, like about $9,000 US? So you do have to have a job and make, and make some money, but who knows what that job actually is. I don't know. OK, oh, yes. well, maybe, maybe one day you could be hosting <laughs> Italian Life. You and Tex. I'm still laughing that you're going to say I'm having more kids. You, you've That's always funny. told me that. You always told me you want a ton more kids. No, I didn't. You don't? No. Oh, I thought you did. We're good. That ship sailed. <laughs> That's good. Connor and AJ are such cuties. Think of all those cute babies you could have. <laughs> okay, so last night I had a really special treat. I went down to the Houston Ballet. You know, they're staging Sylvia. It's the right. world premiere of the show. It premieres tomorrow night. There's Jessica Collardo, Collardo, who's in the front. She's one of the leads. But last night they did this very exclusive little dress rehearsal 
we were in the little box seats. The theater was mostly empty, and we got to see the whole show. There's Brandon, oh. and of course, Jerry Martin, our big boss here at Channel 2. I didn't get that invite. Interesting. Oh, sorry. I'm just kidding. That didn't really happen. No, we went, and the show was awesome. So if you get a chance to go see Sylvia, mm. and plus, it's a world premiere. So who I knows know where this <laughs> ballet... Tex was at home, I guess, taking a nap on the couch. But go see the ballet, Sylvia. You'll be glad you did because the staging, you know, they have these special effects. It's almost like you don't know what you're looking at. Is an animated screen like birds fly by at one oh, point? Fun. It really is cool. So I highly recommend Sylvia down at the Houston Ballet. Uh, they always do an amazing production. So you can't go wrong seeing Houston Ballet for sure. Yep. Stanton Welch. Uh oh, okay. Tex is getting a little bit. He just uh, bit me. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> He gets a it's little like a love fight. Love you too. <laughs> there he love comes. You too. Listen, if you haven't followed Tex on Instagram, uh, his account is KPRC2 Tex, and he has all kinds of adventures all over the You're city. You're making him crazy. Stop it. I'm just giving him some some extra cuddles. Okay. Well, you enjoy those chew toys. They are also known as Courtney's <laughs> hands. Let's talk more about uh, what's coming up on today's show because uh, barbecue, you know, is a big deal. It kicks off. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? tomorrow, Thursday, Thursday yeah. Friday, Saturday, here in Houston at NRG. And after the break, we're going to talk about back in 1974, it was the first official World Championship Barbecue Contest. It was a huge hit, but Courtney, do you know where it all happened? Mm, we're putting our knowledge to the test on all things barbecue, and you can play along with us on clicktovote.com. We'll be right back. All right, who doesn't love some country music just in time for the rodeo? That was a sneak peek of Nashville-based country artist Elizabeth Cook. A little bit later on, we are catching up with the singer-songwriter and sharing where you can check out two performances tonight. Some amazing stuff, for sure. It's Monkey Ducks. Can I just say that yes, now? Yes, yes. Buy your no. tickets now. Mark your calendars. She's amazing. More with Elizabeth later on. Yeah. She's great. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, this weekend is the 46th annual World Championship Barbecue Contest. And although it's been around for many years, there have been some changes along the way. Here to put our barbecue knowledge to the test is chairman of the WCBBQ Contest, David Stone. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. I mean, I know you're not real busy at all right no. now this, this week. No. So we yeah. really appreciate yeah. you coming in because um, this is like full steam ahead right now it is right now we are setting up to host a three-day event and we'll have about 250,000 people through the gates over 31 hours so yes it's it's a lot of work out there and it's a lot of work and one yeah. of the hottest tickets in town by the way yes it is yes uh, how many tents do you guys have for we ha cookers we have uh, we have 253 teams that are competing for the uh, grand champion the title of grand champion and our grand champion gets to go and compete at uh, four other cooks so they get to go to the american royal jack daniels austin san antonio because of a reciprocity agreement we've got their grand champions with us they get to go there so everybody's competing for that title or that the title the trophy and the buckle oh yeah highly coveted titles and prizes there uh, i'll be at the reliant tent by the way tomorrow so stop by and say hi and david i understand we're about to play some trivia sure. And just to warn you, we might be ter terrible at this, but we always like to ask our viewers for help. So if you are by your phone, and who isn't near a phone or a computer, always. go to clicktovote.com to play along with us. And I promise uh, we will do our best with the help okay. of our viewers. Okay. Want to get started? I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready. Let's okay. do it. All right. In 1974, the first official World Championship Barbecue Contest took place in or at the Astro World parking lot in a driveway between 610 and the Astrodome, or C, where the VA Center is today. B. B, that is correct. In the driveway? In the driveway. <laughs> in the driveway between if something that they threw together and... Well, Let's see how it sticks, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of how it started. Exactly. Whose got, driveway was it? Well, it was the driveway of the Astrodome, between the Astrodome and the 610. So it was a driveway, oh. not a personal driveway. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. It wasn't a resident okay. People driveway. just show up at someone's house. <laughs> Come on in. Surprise, we're here. <laughs> And that goes to the next question. Number two, 253 teams will compete in this year's cook-off. 46 years ago, how many teams were in the first one? A, 28 teams, B, 42 teams, or C, 13 teams? 
I will agree with our viewers and say 13 teams. That's correct, 13. See, we actually right. invited 16, 13 of them showed up, and that oh. was our first official cook. Now, have the other three teams, have they been officially banned from competing? Because <laughs> that's Minnesota. what I would do. I, I don't know that answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It was 46 <laughs> years ago. Always RSVP, we that's do all have, I'm saying. We do have one team that's still with us that was actually there that first year. Really? They, they didn't come back the second year, but then they came back every year since then. So they've actually been with us 45 out of 46 years. That is How so cool. cool. Oh. Yes. Love that. Okay, next question. Next question, number three. Uh, what is the Friday afternoon dessert judging contest called at, the, at our contest? Is it A, the Dutch oven, B, the Swedish stovetop, or C, just desserts? I mean, A, right? A. Hey, Dutch oven. Yeah, go. Dutch oven. Gotcha. And that was started about 10 years ago, and we just had a few turn-ins that first, uh, the first time, first year, and now we have about 150 teams turning in Dutch ovens, and it's some of the most incredible food you've ever eaten. And it's in that cast iron. It uh, is. It has pan. to be cooked. It, right. Yes, it has to be cooked in the Dutch oven, and it has to be cooked out there, so it's not like they get to take it home, put it yeah. in the oven. Right. Like it's got to be cooked out there in a smoker, over fire, however they want to do it, but it has to be cooked That's in so a tent. It is a challenge to cook in a tent. Yes, yes. it is. It okay, is. David, next question. The question number four, how much does the sliced beef plate cost at our chuck wagon, the public venue? Is it A, 99 cents, B, $1.25, or C, free? Those are all too low. You should raise your prices. I guess the C, I'm going to go with the, with uh, the viewers. They say free. It is free. Okay. So it's, that's with your, your paid admission. Okay. Yes. Admission's twenty dollars. With that twenty dollars, you actually get to uh, get into the chuck wagon, which is our public food tent, and we've got it decked, we've got it covered, we've got it as comfortable as we can make it, whether it's cold or rainy or whatever. And then that's next door to our rock and barbecue saloon, which is adjacent to the public garden, which has the Miller stage where we have all of our nightly entertainment. So it's a place to be. That's it is. for the public. That's, a, that's a great place. All right. So, okay. Next question, number five. Which of the following is not a competition category at the cook-off? Which is not? A, most unique pit, B, best team name, or C, clean, cleanest team area? Best team name? That's correct, best oh. team name. That's the one we don't judge. Shot in the dark. I mean, the, the cleanliness thing, I'm glad you judged that, because that's <laughs> we do. important, right? We do, and most unique pit, so we have some really unique pits. I mean, United's got one out there that's uh, it's an airplane fuselage, so, I mean, it, we've got some really from, uh, there's an Army tank out there that oh is actually gosh. remote controlled, and they, they take it off the trailer, and it goes moving in their space. It's really neat. There's some unique pits out there. Some unique pits. You know, out yep. of context, that might sound a little strange. If somebody's just walking in. I won the award for <laughs> most unique pits. <laughs> okay, question number six. About how many bags of ice were delivered during our three-day contest last year? Is it A, 9,267, B, 13,458, or C, 57,026 bags of ice? When in doubt, go B. Oh, big. B. 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 Is that it is B? 13,458 bags of ice delivered, and they're 40-pound bags of ice, so they're big bags. All right, and our viewers got that correct as well. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Ready for the next one? Yep. Okay. Number seven. First official World Championship Barbecue Contest featured a celebrity judge. Is it A, Ben Johnson, B, John Wayne, or C, Roy Rogers? Ooh, that's a oh. tough one. Viewers, what do you think? C, Roy Rogers? Wait. Yeah, I'll go with, I'll ring in and say C, Roy Rogers. Oh, I didn't ring the bell. <laughs> I was waiting I was, the bell. Uh, Oh, very official bill. and I yeah I remember Roy Rogers was on my aunt's plane one time she was a flight attendant so I was trying to think back to the year when that would be it's it actually Ben Johnson oh, oh it is. Ben Johnson was well, a celebrity look at that. well thank you viewers <laughs> thanks <laughs> a good guess question number eight what was the original physical configuration of the barbecue cook-off as far as the footprint of it was it a a triangle that's kind of like our logo now B a wagon wheel or C, no configuration, just kind of out there. Wagon wheel. That is correct. Yeah, because oh, that was the old wheel. logo. That's correct. Right? And it's it, we still use it, and you see it in a lot of stuff come out, but we've got pictures of the old wagon wheel, and it was you had all, all of your public area in the middle where we cooked, and then all of the rows spoked off of there. I love it. Really that. neat. We've got pictures of that. Okay, so cool. I think we have time for one last question. Okay, last question real quick. Uh, number nine is, which of these countries will not be represented at this year's cook-off in our international village? A, Brazil, B, Spain, or C, Australia? I'm going to say Spain. That's correct. We have two teams coming from Australia. We have wow. Brazil, Canada, Japan, UK, 
We have six countries represented. I think I just hit all of them. Yeah, you know, I remember 17. last year in the international clubs, like all these buyers from Brazil, and we had some some chefs during cookoff from Australia. Right. So mm -hmm. it's great to see all this international representation, David. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank the show. you for having I us. It's already time for cookoff again, but we'll look it's forward here, to seeing you. It's here, 46th this annual, and we're looking forward to seeing you all out there. Come out and, and have a good time with us. We uh, we will. It's one of our favorite times uh, in town for sure, and we appreciate you taking time out of your Absolutely. busy schedule. Absolutely, we appreciate um, it. Thanks so much. Thank you. After the break, it's time to get to the good stuff. Now we're talking chicken, brisket. Are you prepping and cooking correctly? Tips to keep in mind to prepare the tastiest meat. Up next. Welcome back. Before you burn up your next barbecue, listen up. We are taking notes from an expert who says barbecue does not have to be intimidating. Here with all the details is Yanni Damaris with Team Those Texans as part of the barbecue contest this week. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. This is so great. The spread's amazing. Let's talk about Those Texans because you've got, you just played at this right here. This is what we can get. That's it. That's the plate that you get at the cook-off uh, for your admission ticket, the free plate. Yeah with brisket, beans, and chips, and as, and as many slices of bread as you want. I love it, always mouth-watering. Um, Jamaica's Barbecue, everybody knows it, loves it. Um, I went to your original location off of Hempstead and a fan of the newer location. We have moved that location now. We're right across the freeway, just inside the loop at 610. We've been there about six and a half years now. And you guys have a secret to the, the meat, man. I mean, the brisket, the sausage, everything, it's all in the way you cook it, right? It is in the way you cook it, smoking, so our brisket, since 1964, we've been doing it without any any rubs, which is now a lot of people like the rub. Yeah, and, it's and, very rare. And they want to, you know, people ask us to change it, and, and I can't change that because it changes the flavor profile. Right. So the people that have been coming for 55 years will come in and say, what is this? This isn't the same thing I've been eating all this time. So we've, we're, we're trying out a few new things, trying to spice some briskets up and maybe go to a seasoned brisket also. Well, 55 years though, I mean, that's a long time to be in business. You guys clearly know what you're doing. And today, we also wanna talk a little bit about etiquette because I understand that while a lot of people do use their hands, you say there's an art to doing it well, without making I didn't say that, mess. but I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna show you my art, right? Your art, okay. I mean, with crawfish nowadays, people use the bib and I have a bib sitting right there. In oh, front right of here. You. Right, so, so that's one thing you could do is use a bib. Um, the, the thing that I do when I go and slice, when I go and slice ribs is, is I'll slice a rib off. Look at like that. that, so easy. And then, and then I take the rib and I have a glove on when I slice it so that right. I get, and I put it right there and, and come up. So look at that, you have a glove on one hand but then you have a fork in the other. Fork in the other where you can just pull the meat off if you want. And that way, one hand can get messy and actually grab the meat, yeah. but your other hand, you can sort of eat properly with a fork. Correct. That's, so that's my technique. And the do Michael a lot of Jackson tents technique. at cook-off, do they provide a glove if someone wants that, or is that is this like no. a bring-your-own No. Bring-your-own glove. No, like I said, there, there really isn't an etiquette to eating barbecue. You're, you're going to get messy. Just don't wear a white shirt. Okay, but there's nothing dark, wrong with dark eating. Is al dark is always better. Dark, okay, that's, that's a good also, thing. Also the wet wipes, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, you've always gotta have those on. on wet hands. wipes, wet wipes are crucial. What is, eating ribs. you know, do you like going gas or charcoal? Like what's the? Well, personally charcoal. Okay. Charcoal to me gives it more flavor. We use sometimes a mesquite charcoal. Right. Which gives our burgers a little more flavor versus gas. I'm not, I mean, gas is easy. Right. No, no cleanup, you don't have to do anything with the ashes. It's much easier. But for me, if I have the option, charcoal. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, cutting and trimming uh, different cuts of meat. I noticed you have some chicken I do, and here. I, brought, I brought a knife for you, too. Look at that, baby. Oh, wow, that is, that's quite a knife. I'm not sure our viewers can I see. I know. So chicken, chicken is probably the hardest of the meats to cut. Okay. And, and I, I was gonna go ahead and see how you would cut it if you were gonna go ahead and cut that. Oh. Do you wanna, do you wanna, you wanna get, get in there? Sure, get in. I'll try it. Um, let's see. And be careful with that knife, it's sharp. Wait, down the middle? Yes. Okay. You're exactly right. Down the middle if, first. If you put your hand right on top of that and just push down. Right on top? There you okay. go. And you're gonna cut through the... So oh, I'm cutting really cut through. through I'm the cutting through some bones here. Correct. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Why there do you wanna cut it that way? Just because well, you get you the most you, meat? You have the chicken, right? Okay. So now you have two wings, two legs, two breasts, two thighs. Oh. Okay. All right, so now the chicken's cut in half. Then, then if, 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 if the chicken's cooked properly. Oh, it just, the leg that, falls that right leg off. That leg will fall right off. And this, then the. This, this comes apart. 
and then the wing should also fall right off but but if you cut it watch your fingers okay you cut it right there in the joint and that's and the now, proper way to now, do it and now you've separated the whole brisket now you're ready to put a glove on the other hand and, and just go it. there that's you right. go so you got the or, leg or go with the, the wing technique. the breast but always start by cutting straight down the center cutting it half in half first correct that's that's the that's the only way I know to do it. Perfect. Now you know. Now, now you got to eat. I just got to stuff my pocket full of gloves. I know. Well, don't forget the World Champion Barbecue Contest is going on starting tomorrow. If you live under a rock, it's 5 p.m. until 11, Friday at noon till 11, Saturday 9 a.m., all evening long, of course, NRG Park. And uh, this is rain or shine, people. No matter what happens with the weather, it is cook-off, it's rodeo, just deal with it, prepare for it. Tickets, the adults are 20 bucks, children five, three to 12, and two and under are free. Yeah, a little rain is not a problem. That's ah. what the tents are for. Yanni Damaris, thank you so much for stopping by. Once Great again, to see thanks you. for having me. I'm about to cut this stuff up for you guys to eat. Amazing. Lunch. Our staff loves Thanks, you Johnny. already. You <laughs> Thank you. And good luck this weekend as Thank well. You. Thank you. A reminder, you. by the way, if you'd like more barbecue contest info, just visit the Scene on Houston Life section on our website. And it's not all business in Houston's energy corridor. After the break, experience the luxury of Hotel Sorella City Center. We're going to take you there, plus give you a chance to win a one-night stay on us. It's hard to imagine relaxation or luxury in the heart of Houston's bustling energy corridor until you find Hotel Sorella. We're located in uh, city center, mixed use development with a lot of restaurants, shops and restaurants. So think of this as a one-stop shop. You come to the hotel and you have all the amenities that city center has to offer from movie theater to lifetime fitness to all the great restaurants in our area. With so much to do and eat in the area, Hotel Sorella doesn't just fit in, but it stands out. We have our own restaurant, Radio Milano, with great vibe, uh, high energy bar, fantastic food. And along with a great meal, you don't look too far to find entertainment. Locals are part of the hotel. Every weekend, City Center uh, does a fantastic job with the plaza behind the hotel. Live bands throughout the weekend, daddy-daughter dances, just synergy throughout the complex. Whether you're looking for a vacation in the city or if you want to move in permanently, there are options for everyone. The staycations are hit with us. With all the great facilities that City Center has to offer, it's one-stop shop. We have 244 guest rooms. We have condos available for long-term lease from one bedroom to a three-bedroom condo. We have a lot of locals that uh, live with us. And we've had residents here for three years. Made service every single day, all your utilities um, included, and of course, all the amenities that City Center has to offer. With three styles of rooms, there's plenty of space to stretch out. We have a standard room, um, which is a room with a king-size bed, junior suites, and third is our penthouse. Penthouses are located on top of the hotel on the 11th and 12th floor. Perfect view of all, all of Houston. We're in a two-bedroom, two-bath uh, study. Uh, this is... Uh, about 2,000 square feet, so it's uh, fairly large. And if you need meeting space, Hotel Sorella has that too. We're right in the middle of the energy quarter, so we have all uh, the tenants throughout the area that we cater to, uh, all the own gas companies that we hold uh, meetings for. We have um, meeting space available. We have 8,000 square feet of meeting space uh, in the bottom section of our hotel. Our largest uh, ballroom can accommodate 240 guests for weddings and uh, receptions, uh, things of that nature. They can also be converted to meetings uh, uh, for group meetings. Um, it can seat up to 280 guests. On the small side, if you just want to have an intimate meeting for five guests, we have that available as well. And if you're looking for high tech, you've come to the right place. We just rolled out a new program, a uh, new amenity. It's called a Crave Tablet. So you're able to do everything and anything you want from this one tablet. You can control your TV, you can order room service, you can see all the amenities that we have to offer and everything that City Center has to offer. We were um, awarded with Conley Nass Magazine, uh, top 10 hotels in Texas. Uh, it's been our fourth year in a row that we've uh, earned this award. When it's time to unwind, why not take a dip? We have a pool that's connected to our main bar, Mona Lisa. It's uh, situated on the second floor. It's a nice lounge area. You can order your cocktails from, from the bar and just relax and buy a poolside. Cocktails, restaurants, huge rooms, and everything City Center has to offer. 
right at your fingertips. Hotel Sorella doesn't just offer luxury, it defines it. Well, you can experience the luxury of Hotel Sorella firsthand on us. We have a one-night stay giveaway happening right now on our website. To enter, visit HoustonLife.tv, click on the link, and enter your information for a chance to win. All rules and regulations are also posted there as well. Good luck. And up next on Houston Life, Nashville-based country artist Elizabeth Cook is in the house ahead of her gig tonight in Houston. More on her story plus a live performance right after this. Train to fix jets at the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. If you want to work with your hands, it's a perfect place for you. AIM's doing a great job of giving the basic system knowledge. The job opportunity is there. The money is there. We give you the groundwork, the cornerstones, if you will. I'm very impressed with the AIM curriculum. The school's keeping pace with the demands of the industry. The potential for growth is astounding. Visit traintomorrow.com or call 888-FIX-JETS. Tonight, the Chicago Wednesday crossover night starts with the crisis med has been training for. I need help! Then, it's the epic fire and PD crossover event. What do you need from us? Hey, Belle, what are you doing? Chicago Wednesday, tonight on NBC. <laughs> he's won an Emmy, a Grammy, a Tony, even an Oscar. And now, he's going to be the new coach. Isn't this fun, guys? John Legend joins The Voice this Monday on NBC. Now I'm worried. Hey, hope you're liking the sunshine today. It looks that very nice sunshine at Herman Park today outside of our studios as well. Lovely. After yesterday, we didn't see much sun. Hope you love it because tomorrow we're going to see some changes. This is Exact Track Radar showers off the coast. We're going to start to see that starting to make its way back in. Not today, though. Mid-60s for our high temperatures. We'll see that rain coming back into play. Going into Thursday and Friday, going into the weekend as well. Sunday's another great day. Get ready to enjoy warmer temperatures. Cambrell, thank you for that. Elizabeth Cook is known as a sharp and surprising country singer, making, get this, hundreds of appearances at the Grand Ole Opry. She has released six studio albums and was one of David Letterman's favorite guests, and they still are friends today. Now she's a guest on our little show. Please welcome Nashville-based singer and songwriter, Elizabeth Cook. Welcome to Houston <laughs> Life. Hey, it's good to be here. Uh, you have such an incredible story. And by the way, also um, Sirius XM, Radio country. Yep. Uh, outlaw country. Co outlaw country. Outlaw country. Oh, I just had a I <laughs> fangirl on you. I just had a mind break. But I mean, we were just chatting in the makeup room earlier, and you're still you still hear from David Letterman. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, he he's he texts like yeah. He'll text me and hit me up. He called me. I was in L.A. And he called me to check in, and yeah, we keep in touch. We're that like, is so hey. awesome. It's crazy. Well, he listens to the radio show right. on Sirius XM, so that's how he first ever heard about me and and when he called you or when they found it like hey come on to the David Letterman show were you like uh what? yes <laughs> I lost my mom I was like what is happening I thought maybe I was being punk right I didn't understand it um, because he wanted to do like a couch interview and I'm you know a musician and right made records and so I was like he but they want to talk it's like what does he want to talk about and <laughs> yeah. why is this happening and uh, yeah he just he had me on and and um, he just wanted to shoot the breeze and, well, and talk about my life and our records and career and and the radio show and it was it was insane the first time i met him was in, on tv in really? front of millions of people oh my gosh I, no prep i was completely a little bit out. of pressure but it doesn't yeah. surprise us though because you were so talented and you have such a great personality we were looking at some videos of you online earlier courtney was laughing and oh laughing. my gosh <laughs> does it feel like work to you at this point of your career i mean i'm just kind of going throughout my day and like my pajamas with fringe on like I don't really think of, <laughs> of like no I mean the work parts probably the travel right um, but you know talking to people hanging out making music playing you're, shows you're, you're like, living that's the dream. all that's all like pretty easy you know right that part hillbilly singer your mom was and your dad yes. was in jail for what making <laughs> prison. moonshine yes prison. yeah Atlanta federal well he served two two threes and a five he was sentenced he served eight um, he's, he was with an organized crime ring. So oh, wow. It, with was, the it was a long time ago with yeah. the moonshine. It was a problem. Uh, he was a repeat offender. Uh, he said that they finally convinced him was against the law to make moonshine. Right. So in, he in finally prison. quit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But he was in a prison band. 
He was in the band in prison. Yeah, he was, uh, he played upright bass and he was like the band leader. And he said it was really hard to have a band in prison because like some people would get in trouble and then they couldn't go outside and so do the you, shows. And he's like, lose an instrument. keep a consistent, a consistent crew in the band. What That's an incredible hard. family story you have. And I'm sure all of those ups and downs with your family, that helped shape your career. We do want to let our viewers know that tonight you will be at McGonagall's Mucky Duck. Yes. First performance is 7 p.m., yes. second show at 9.30. Yes. And if people want to get tickets, uh, they can find tickets online and uh, go and check out Elizabeth Cook because not only is she loaded with talent, but a ton of personality. And as she just said herself, she loves to wear pajamas with fringe. <laughs> and they look great, Elizabeth. So uh, why don't you take it away with Straight Jacket Love? Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks. We on here? Yeah, there we go. This is a song off my last record called Exodus of Venus. This is Straight Jacket Love. When Welcome back. So the experts say no matter our experience levels, gardening is something everyone can be good at. Nicole Burke with Rooted Garden is joining us now to share tips and tricks for a successful spring garden. You know I do not have a green thumb or fingers. And you know, I don't allow people to say that. Okay. Because oh, slap my snap. hand. I really, I, I can't keep anything alive. Well, you can if okay. you time it right and you have some help. And that's why I'm here. We're gonna be friends. My girl to the rescue. Okay. I've killed plenty of plants too. You just bury it and move on. Okay, yeah, yeah. just know, celebrate your successes. So what do we do now? Like what's our first thing? I mean, it, now's the season to plant? Yeah, well, so Houston's pretty unique. We get to plant all year round. We have four seasons. They're just not like the rest of the world's four seasons. Um, so we get two warm seasons. We get two times to try tomatoes, all like the quintessential vegetables of the garden. And we are in the middle, we're right at the beginning of that season right now. So I'm gonna tell you guys what we're putting in the garden today. And what's great about what you're putting in the garden today is you can create some pretty tasty and colorful bowls, right? Yeah, and right as soon as you taste something straight from the garden, I promise you, you'll be hooked. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get started. Okay. We're doing tomatoes and peppers. So what I love to do for um, our clients especially is break down things into plant families. So as you know, in your own family, you're not exactly alike, but you have some similar traits. And if you start to think of plants in families, it kind of removes the mystery and you go, okay, these guys kind of have similar things going on. They grow around the same time, et cetera. Right. So in the nightshade family, we have peppers, potatoes and tomatoes, and those are all going into the garden right now. Okay. Okay, so peppers, you really wanna start with a plant right now because we're already warming up, which is amazing. Um, so you would put your plant directly into your garden, and it's gonna take about 60 to 90 days, and then you're gonna have something like this. Okay. Um, the easiest pepper to grow, if you want, is like a jalapeno or a hot pepper. Okay. Tomatoes, you're gonna put those in with a plant too. And potatoes are a super fun thing to grow, especially if you've got kids, yes. you've got to try this. So you're just going to take some potatoes, slice it in half, and I'm going to let you guys try on. They're wearing my favorite gloves. Okay. So what we're going to do is dig a hole. Okay. So what you do is slice the potato in half. You want to make sure there's two or three eyes on each potato. And this is just any regular potato from the store? Well, it needs to be organic, okay. for sure. Okay. Because, like, non-organic, they've sprayed it with something, so it can't do this. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, you can just start with an organic potato from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. We like to buy ours from nurseries, but they work this way. You're going to go like 
four to six inches down, and you want this part to be on top. Okay. The round part on top. Exactly. Why did you use the knife? I, well, because or whatever he likes that, is. that one. It's to, the hori hori. To help dig the hole. It looks like a knife. <laughs> Stuck my hand in there. <laughs> well, you could know. do it either See, way, you right? You do okay. have a green Now cover it. All right, cover it up, and then when that starts to grow, you're going to mulch it in about by like mid to end of May. You're going to pull that up, and there's going to be like six to ten potatoes on it. Wow. Crazy? Okay. Okay. Wow. So that's the first plant family, the nightshade family. The second family is the cucurbit family. So what's that sound like? Cucumbers? Girl, you're good. Okay. okay. So cucumbers, squash, zucchini, those all go into the garden right about now to the beginning of March. Those, instead of planting with a plant, you're going to start with a seed. Okay. So um, these will just do so much better if you start with a seed. They kind of get a little testy if you try to move them around. Okay. So you plant with seed, and cucumbers are going to go up like a trellis. They're going to be vining, and then squash and zucchini, they need a lot of space. You want to give each one like two to three feet in your garden. Okay. okay. Now, I know we have containers here for our purpose. Can you start in a container if you have... You can. If you were going to do a squash plant, I would do just one seed in this whole for the whole container, container. Wow. exactly the potatoes could totally work in that one okay if you do a container keep it watered watch it really carefully because you can feel like a failure um, containers are honestly some of the hardest okay all right then we've got arugula you guys know i love growing salad in the garden right yeah. so the sweet lettuces are kind of finishing up but now we can still do arugula and kale all through the warm season those you want to plant by seed don't harvest them when they're this big because it's going to like be not so tasty. So, so bitter, right? They're bitter. Yeah, they're a little peppery. So you want to harvest them when they're little, tiny, like these guys. Okay. So here's a little arugula. Tip. So they get more bitter the older they get. Just like Just people. Just like people. Like people. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, final one. This is going to be a fun one for you We're guys to try. We. <laughs> so um, if you're if you're new to gardening, this is one of the easiest ways to start is bush beans. They just provide a lot. I brought you guys your own packages Yay! of seeds. So you're going to try to plant these. These you literally just plant with the dry seed and you okay. can put, each of you guys can put one down. You would probably only put um, one seed in here, but we'll do two just for a kick. So how, like how far down? What so do you, you want to do like two to three times the size of the seed, so about three inches. Yeah, perfect. Oh, okay. You have got a green thumb, girl. Not bad, huh? I'm impressed. And then we just lightly cover it, right? Exactly. And then pretty soon you're going to see a shoot come up, and then you'd want to thin that to just one plant. Oh, my gosh. Um, so that's, that's all you can put in the garden right now. These are going to be coming up. You'll start harvesting, say, like May, June. I love it. And um, you also have something like this for our viewers. Yours, right? Yeah, so we've, through our company, we've really like broken down the mystery of the Houston Garden. So our four seasons are different, and we have a little download you can get for free. Which is on the screen right now. Yep, it's at rootedgarden.com. You can download this. It gives you what grows each season. And we also just opened the Houston Kitchen Garden Club. So it's this fun insider club where I teach every month um, what grow, what to grow, what to plant, what to tend, things like that. Great idea. I'm intrigued. Yeah. You guys better oh, join. You. Okay, this was amazing. Thanks for the seeds. I know. Right. Thank you so much. For more information, visit our site, HoustonLife.tv. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, how to make ravioli like a true Italian. We'll show you next. Well, while there is nothing wrong with cooking dry pasta that comes in a box, but if you want to make a special meal for your family, how about some homemade pasta? Do not be afraid, folks. Francesca Lanza, cooking instructor for the Italian Cultural and Community Center, is here in our studio with an easy recipe for spinach and ricotta ravioli. Welcome to the show. Good pronunciation. Well Thank done. you very much. <laughs> now, how much experience is required to make something like this dish? Not a lot of experience. You will see. It's very easy. Okay, so we're starting with mm -hmm. our dough basically yeah. already made. Yeah. Okay, and then what do we do with it? We're going to do something that is very fun, and also it's a good workout. Okay. That's why oh. we are very skinny. <laughs> we eat a lot of pasta, and we are skinny because we do a lot of workout. I love it. <laughs> and the dough, by the way, is just flour, egg, and... Uh, Correct. Salt, and a little and bit salt? of olive oil. Oh, easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get started. You so you need it. one of these, right? Yeah, you need one of these. Which is a pasta, is it a press? It's a pasta mm, press, yes. Okay. Pasta okay. machine. We this call one's it. called Imperia? Imperia, and it's made in Italy. Yeah, oh, okay. these I've seen all over. But you can okay. find it also here. And it's, um, it, there, it doesn't, it's the uh, elbow grease. We oh, do yeah. it. There's nothing you plug in. Unless if you want to do more workout, you can use a rolling pin. Oh, yeah, no, this looks easier. Like a real grandmother. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. But if you want to try. Sure, sure. Courtney, do you want to yeah. do the crank? Yeah. And I just hold it right here? Let's see. We start with number one, that is the thickest. Okay. And then don't be afraid. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Very and easy. we go back? And or then, no? yeah, we will be a little bit thicker. Okay, okay. so make it even. So, so you gradually thin. go down. Yeah. Okay. So it has to be very, very thin, almost transparent. Okay. Okay. But let's do another round. One another more. one? Mm -hmm. And then we will. I feel like you need lots of hands for this. Do you do this <laughs> alone? Yeah, yeah. Right, Jessica? Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh. You can do it. Okay, yes. here we go. I thought she was going to grab it. We're on our own now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're uh, yeah. training wheels have you been see, removed. It's very easy. Oh, yeah. This is good, right? Okay, beautiful. Great. And then the first one is ready. You want to do another one? Yes, yeah, ready? I'll work on another one while okay. you continue showing okay. Courtney what to do. And it's important, I guess, this is parchment paper, right? So yeah. it's important to have a flowered. Mm -hmm. um, Workstation. Absolutely. And don't forget to sprinkle always flour. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't stick. How are you doing? You okay? I think I'm okay. Oh, All you right. see, you can do yeah. it by yourself. Great, great. Okay, so what and do we then do now? We need the filling. Okay. And you this is spinach and ricotta. Spinach and ricotta. The spinach were pre-cooked with some butter. And then ricotta, parmesan, and nutmeg. Okay, and then is that sauteed in a pan? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then what do we do now? I can show you the first yeah. one. Okay. So you need to put it in the center more or less. And then they have to be one inch apart. Okay. Other. So if I can do the first one, you can yeah, try to yeah, do the other sure. one. And it's fun. So just a little bit and then move over. Oh, okay. Right. Because we're going to cut, I guess, right? Yes. Is that enough or yes. more? And maybe put it here. Down here? Yeah. And you can see Great. the ingredients uh, there at home on your screen right there. So these are all just very basic, accessible ingredients that you yeah. can find at any grocery store. All right, right, Francesca. Okay. And you can do. I do the same yes. on mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now do we cut? And now you have to cover them. Oh. Like little babies. Okay. <laughs> so now we're putting them to bed. Like yeah. little babies. And oh. then don't forget to push out the air. Okay. Because otherwise they're going to explode. Oh no! Oh, we don't dear. want that. No and explosions. We don't want that. No. So push that. And if you need, you can just dip your finger, and put some water here. Because that helps it stick. Yeah, it helps to stick. Okay. It's not necessary, but if you think that is necessary, you can do it. It okay. almost looks like a pot of green beans there, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, that's it true. It does. Oh, yeah, the shape of it. Yeah. You're right. Okay, now? Well done. Now is the fun part. Okay. You have to make the ravioli, and they have to look like rectangular. Okay. So... Oh, maybe you go oh, yeah, first. I can do the first one. Okay. And they don't have to be the same size. So if they, if they look like this... That's okay, right? It's okay. Because it's homemade. Yeah. yeah. Oh so, my, gosh, my grandmother so will be Aww. proud of you. Oh. Yeah, can I this other one? <laughs> yeah. And we can buy this anywhere, right? Yes, absolutely. Really? Oh, don't go back. Okay. All right. Okay. And then, okay, so once these are cut, I see we have boiling water yeah. ready to go. Is that salted water as yeah. well? Yeah, I pre salted the water. Okay. And then you will see it looks like 30 seconds. That's it. Very quick because you it's fresh. You don't have yep. to worry about it. And I guess, how do we know when it's done? Because they pop they, up? Yes. Look at that. They start to float. Only <gasps> 30 seconds is, yep. is how long it takes to cook. Absolutely. Oops. Oh, sorry oh, about goodness. the splashes. No Third degree I'm not a real Italian. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, by the way, Francesca, you do little workshops so people oh, can yeah. come and learn how to do this Absolutely. directly from you, right? Yeah, at the Italian Cultural and Community Center. Gosh, we do so cooking cool. class. And also next month there will be a gnocchi class. <gasps> Which is good too. Yeah. Gnocchi Check are it very out. Those good. are the dates right there on your screen. March 28th, my mom's birthday, and April 25th, starting at 7 p.m. So if you want a front row seat to learn how to make authentic Italian pasta Absolutely. the true way, there's the info right there. And the Italian Absolutely. Cultural and Community Center is fantastic. You're just adding in some butter, yeah. little spices, butter and, and they're sage. ready to go. Butter and, and sage, this. and that's it. Beautiful. Beautiful product right there. We got to leave it there. We'll taste it during the commercial break. But in the meantime, you can find the recipe online in the food section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. Francesca, thanks. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. We'll be right back. Today's Amazing Animal Tale is brought to you by the Houston SPCA. When you've been saving the lives of animals for a long time, the individual stories can start to blend together. But for Houston SPCA rescue technician Yenny, Rivia's story has left a big impression. The ambulance report was fairly typical. Someone saw Riva get hit by a car and she was yelping in pain 
bleeding on the side of the road. Jenny rushed her back to the Houston SPCA to get the little terrier immediate veterinary care. And x-rays revealed more than just a broken leg from the car impact. Reva had also been shot and had a bullet lodged in her side. Oh my word. The trauma from the collision left her leg broken beyond repair. So the veterinarian team performed an emergency amputation right away. And despite the horror she had endured, somehow this little dog has been nothing but loving to everyone. And she's even earned a special place in Yenny's heart forever. For more amazing animal tales, log on to the Houston SPCA.org. What a fun show we had today, Miss Courtney Zavala. Uh, amazing. Yeah, and uh, by the way, tomorrow on Houston Life, you want the rodeo look without the hefty price tag? Courtney and I go head to head in a little thrift store challenge. The budget is only 25 bucks. <laughs> Who's going to spend the least? Who's going to win this challenge? Find out tomorrow. Clearly, he was following me. Yeah, I can't believe we keep meeting at this thrift store. How does it's that very happen? strange, isn't it? By the way, in the meantime, this homemade ravioli Francesca just made for us. Delicious. Delicious. Ciao, Bella. And um, Elizabeth Cook, Mucky Duck. Oh, yeah, go see her tonight. Manja. Oh. Mm -hmm, get it. Mm. See you tomorrow.